Hey guys, so in this training, we're gonna learn a little bit about power trial on a concrete floor, how to finish it properly. This is about 30 minutes after the pour. So we're gonna check it. I'm gonna show you what it feels like right now. It's about 70 degrees out today, but we'll go over the timing of it uh, and all the different steps it takes to power trial and then saw cut a concrete floor like today. So let's just take a look at what it feels like right now, about 30 minutes after the pour. So I'll touch it at first, and then if I feel like it's really firm, then I'll step on it. Let's take a look. You can tell by touch, that's starting to get really firm, and we're only, like I said, about a half an hour after the pour. I could probably press in about a quarter of an inch, then I gotta start really putting a lot of pressure on the concrete. It's getting close. Not quite ready for me yet. I mean, if I was brand new to this and I've never power trialed concrete before, I'd be starting to really think about getting on this right now because it's gonna take you probably quite a while to get this thing floated up. But for me, knowing that it's only gonna take me a couple minutes to hit this with a power trial, I'm gonna let that set up a little bit more. Now I'm gonna step on it right there just to show you what it looks like after I step on it. All right, so you can tell it's pretty firm. It's supporting my weight, but I can tell under my feet, it just feels a little squishy to me. Um, like I have to walk very carefully not to sink in any more than that. So it's still too soft for me to get on with a power trial. But I would say like if I was guessing where this thing's coming up in the sun right now, it's been in the shade for quite a while, probably 15 minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes. I'm gonna check that again and it'll probably be ready for me. So I'm just gonna mag float that out, get that smoothened out. I don't wanna leave those tracks there and let them get let them get hard inside the concrete so yeah you can see that footprint right there i mean it was about a quarter of an inch it sunk in if you can see it so i'll just get that filled back in i can tell by just mag floating the concrete like that it feels really creamy like this is going to be a nice paste on the surface to finish some concrete feels good, some doesn't. Um, most of the time, our concrete feels pretty good for finishing. Let's give it 15 minutes. We'll come back, check it again. Uh, I'm gonna get the power trial ready to go. Pretty much just gotta gas it up, hook it to the crane, and then I'll show you how I drop it down in. All right, so one part of finishing, one thing I like to do when I'm finishing by myself, especially, is if I can reach the edges from the outside, I like to mag float my edges before I get on it with a power trial just to smooth them out, fill in any little voids or deviations from when we poured. That's basically all I'm doing. Uh, and then, you know, I mag float them with my mag the first time and then I hit them with a steel trowel all the times after that, probably three or four times after that. So I'll just show you right here how I mag float. I'm gonna go around and do these two sides right now and I'll leave that side over there where it's down over the eight foot wall. I'll just wait till I get on it with the power trowel to do that side. But I can do the front, you know, where I have the garage door tip downs. I can get all that from the outside. And then these two sides just make finishing a lot easier. So I don't know if you could see, can you see that right there? Where I hit it with the mag float, there's a tiny little piece, even though I hold that nice and flat, there's a tiny little piece there. It's not really hitting too good. So I want to just make, I'm going to go all the way around, fill that in. If it, if it comes and tips down just a little bit, I want to fill all that in. And then any other little imperfections I'll fill in. It's just going to make it easier for me to finish this thing and make it look a lot nicer in the long run. So I'll just, I can scrape up some cream till I tip that up, scrape up, bring the cream to the edge. Then I can fill it right in like that. Or I can scrape it up that way, fill it right in. That's, that's what I want it to look like all the way around the outside. If you can see that see that there's a little bit of a gap right there i just make sure i fill that in with that cream go right over it fills that gap right in just these little techniques you know these little 
tips and tricks that finishers do that most people don't know if they don't finish concrete every day. They either, either don't do the edges and they just hit it with a power trowel or they don't do them right. See when I go over that, see there's still a little bit of a gap there. Just want to keep get that filled in. I tip my mag and I scrape a little bit of the surface. See all that cream you get right there to you you can use to fill stuff in. And then you just hold it flat after that and mag that part out. It's nice and smooth. That's all you do. It doesn't create any surface defects there. I mean the power trial is gonna go around and it's gonna fix everything anyway, but that's how you fill that stuff in. All right, so it's been another 15 or 20 minutes. Let's, let's just go check it again. This time, you know, I can press on it and show you. Yeah, this time I'm, I'm, I can't even really sink my fingers in. Okay, so it's, it's firm. I can still tell it's not like rock hard, but it's firm enough so that's, my fingers aren't pressing in any. Now let's look at my feet. So I would say that's about a sixteenth of an inch, not even an eighth. Doesn't feel squishy under my feet anymore. So this thing's, this thing's for me. This thing's ready to go right now. It's about twenty-six by twenty-eight. I'm gonna get the power trial off with the crane. Basically, just hook the crane right to the power trial. Then I got the battery. I got my battery hooked to the crane. So it's just a remote. Uh, let's, let's go over a couple things about the power trial. So on, on and off is right here. You know, you're going to turn it on. This controls the pitch of the blades, right? Right now they're all the way down. They're flat. I want them up about a quarter of an inch. Pull that back. I want them tipped up just a little bit on this first hit. And then usually every time you hit it thereafter, you might tip them up just a little bit more. So I got it on. This is my gas on, this is my choke. Pull it over to start. I just want to make sure I have a really good grip on the handles when I start it. Sometimes these things want to take off and go. Throttle's right here. Yeah, I just make sure the throttle's all the way down, but still, sometimes they want to go. So we just make sure that, you know, I got a good, good grip on it. If it's brand new, it'll usually sit there and idle without, you know, when the throttle's down, but sometimes after you use them for a while, they, they start taking off on you. So what I generally do is I generally, <clears throat> I generally follow a pattern. So I'll either go east-west, I'll call it, or north and south. And if I go one way on this hit, I'll cross it on the second hit. When I go the other way, you'll see that in a minute. But um, I'll go, I'll go right here first and I'll go east-west and I'll work my way to the back so you can get a pretty good view of this right here while I got it on video. And then I'm just looking to work this up, get it smooth, kind of like when I mag float, fill in any of the little imperfections, take out the bull float lines, and you'll see it's going to look a lot different here.
All right, so that went really good. That was perfect timing. You can see the pattern I follow. And, you know, I like when you lift up on the handles of the power trowel, it goes, it goes to the left as the power trowel is in front of you. When you push down on the handles, it goes to the right. So that's kind of how you control that thing. So I like my finish pattern going to the left. And then I come back to my right. And I keep the top of the, the cage that's on the blades keep the top of that cage at the bottom of my finish pattern, if that makes sense, when I come back. And then I come back up and on my finish pattern, I split the two in half. And that's why the pattern looks like that as I go nice and neat. And that helps flatten the floor even more than it already is, as well as fill in the imperfections and stuff, just like when you saw when I was mag floating. So I'll give that on a day like today, I'll give that probably 20 minutes or so and I'll check it again. And then I'll go the other way, same pattern, but just the opposite way, 90 degrees, and that helps flatten it even more. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my steel trowel, okay, go around all the edges that I can reach and smooth out the edges even more. Since the concrete has set up a little bit more, they're going to keep getting smoother and smoother. So just to stay ahead of the game, I'm going to go do my edges. I'll get my garage doors really smooth. Sometimes the garage doors have set up enough where I can get my broom finish on them. I might do that. So let's start right there. All right, guys. So if you've made it this far in the video, if you've watched this much, you must be really interested in learning how to finish concrete. Now, the remainder of this training video is going to be in the concrete underground. So if you want to really get to all the, all the nuts and bolts about how I finish this concrete floor, how I finished power trial on it, how I got those garage door tip downs to look like that, how I actually tipped them down. And then, you know, obviously you get to see me here sawing a little bit. If you want to learn all that stuff and, you know, work your way into becoming a concrete finisher, how to steel trial the edges and make sure you do them right so when you're done, it looks just like the part of the floor that's been power trialed. That's all going to be in the concrete underground. The remainder of this training video will be in there. So just look, leave me a comment down below that you want to learn more and I'll send you the link for the Concrete Underground so you can just join that and get all my training videos in there. Plus you get me in there through email. Uh, we can talk in the forum if you got questions and you can begin to start learning how to finish concrete like, you know, like the masters do, like the pros do. And we do this stuff every single day. We've made a really good living doing this stuff over the years. Now, whether you could just have one floor to do or you maybe you want to start your own business and do concrete floors kind of like I do here with just a small crew or work your way up into a bigger crew down the road. I've had guys do that before after watching and joining the Concrete Underground. Um, that's all possible. Just you got to start with step one first and, you know, learning how to finish concrete when to start finishing concrete that's all part of it take it's a process and you know hands-on training is always really really good but sometimes you just don't have the access to hands-on training in the moment but you can still learn through video like this with someone who's willing to teach you like me so let me know down in the comments what other questions you have but you know grab that link join the concrete underground and i'll see you in there guys thanks